I just started to feel like numb and detached and like I didn't really care about anything. Hello, it's been a long while. My name is Raven and this is Becoming MD. I have not made a video in a super long time. I don't even remember the last time I made a video. And in this video, I want to be like super transparent about why that is. And um, hopefully it will be helpful to somebody. So let's rewind. Originally, I started this channel because I was at this place in my life where I was in a different career. I really wasn't happy and I didn't feel like I was living out my life goals. And like the main goal was really to be of service to people, to help people and make a positive impact on other people's lives. And then there were other things too. I think I really thrive on being like, intellectually stimulated and challenged and I like having meaningful interactions with people. I'm not really big on sitting in front of a computer all day. So there were things like that. But really the main thing was just like how can I live this meaningful life that will positively impact other people. So that was happening and um you know many years Prior, when I was starting out college, I thought maybe I'd become a doctor, started the pre-med route, but then other things happened in my life that came up and made it difficult for me to do that in undergrad. So then fast forward a couple of years after college, I'm in this place where I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I actually saw on Facebook that one of my friends from high school had done this thing called a post back. And I think maybe my dad had mentioned a post back at some point earlier on in college, but I don't really think I processed it until I saw my friend from high school having posted this. And then I realized like, it's not too late for me to become a doctor. And that's like a big reason why I made this channel is just the fact that I don't know how many people know that there are so many paths to becoming a doctor that isn't the traditional path. And there are so many people who we lose from this profession because of the fact that there's like a lot of gatekeeping. Like it's just super difficult to become a doctor. It's very expensive, like so expensive doing the applications and um, you know, the interview process and paying for it, that's a whole other thing. And then also, there are so many hurdles along the way, like a lot of times in undergrad, in college and universities, these pre-med courses are made to be so challenging and so competitive that it's really hard to, you know, persist and get to the point of even applying to medical school. And I think some people say like, oh, you know, that's for good reason. Like, I really want my doctor to know everything. But trust me, there are a lot of things in those pre-medical science classes. These are like basic sciences that you, your doctor is not using when they're treating you at all. I spent a lot of time thinking about in physics like a ball dropping from space and like velocity and acceleration like these are just I, I think understanding physical principles understanding chemical principles understanding biological principles are important but these are not things that you need to know every single detail of in order to be able to be, be a good doctor you just need to get I think it's really about getting this um, like scientific intuition and understanding but back to the point, which is that there are a lot of people who are kept out of medicine for a number of reasons, like because they have other things going on in their life and maybe they're facing things like poverty, um, housing or food insecurity, violence, discrimination, oppression, 
all of these things that you people are dealing with. And then on top of that, they're already being pushed out and being told like, no, you can't do this. You can't become a doctor. But they absolutely can. And they absolutely deserve to have just as much of a chance of becoming a doctor as someone who has a lot of resources and so can afford to, you know, pay for a tutor in college, pay for, you know, classes and tutoring for their MCAT, all of that stuff. So for me, it's it, this channel is a big about the fact that if you're, you know, it's not too late for anyone to become a doctor and how can we support people, especially people who are facing even more barriers in getting to the place where they can they can go into medicine. So you've probably seen a lot of videos on my channel that are about post facts that are um, about like applying to medical school, trying to just give people that insider information that I've gotten along the way that is important to being successful and hope that it gives them that, you know, a little step forward, a little edge. I'm not doing everything. Like I really wish that I could be more supportive. I think finances is a huge thing and maybe there'll be a point where I can get into that. Um, I really wanted to be able to add ads to this channel and create scholarships, but we'll see. I'm not there yet. So that is really why I created this channel. And then I got to medical school and I started remote. I've done all of medical school so far, at least somewhat remote because of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I, you know, at the beginning, I was sort of struggling with a little bit of imposter syndrome, feeling like, oh, there are people who just have more research experience, like maybe more knowledge of the basic sciences than I do because they studied, not only do they do pre-med courses, but they studied biochem or they studied chemistry, whatever they studied. But then I got over that because I actually found that like I could keep up very well, um, even though I had done the pre-med requirements in one year. And so I guess that's, you know, a testament to the fact that it's very possible to do this untraditional way of learning the basic sciences and do the pre-med courses and still be fine in medical school. So I moved past the imposter syndrome in that regard, but in general, something that I've struggled with is this feeling of trying to preserve myself and my identity in the midst of medical school. And I didn't really anticipate how much of a challenge it would be to keep, you know, keep almost hard to put into words but to really be able to like keep being myself and I know that people always are progressing and changing and I've always been really drawn to challenges for the fact that they helped me to improve but that wasn't really what was happening I think if anything what I felt like was happening is that I have this passion and curiosity and joy and I started to lose those things like I just started to feel like numb and detached and like I didn't really care about anything and I think the reality is is that there are probably a number of different factors that contribute to that so one of them is just the fact that the amount of time that is required to really do well in medical school I think it, it varies and many medical schools, at least in the preclinical years, are past fail. And that is true of my medical school, but I found myself feeling like this fear that if I didn't study everything and learn everything, then I would be in front of a patient and I wouldn't know something that I needed to know. So I felt this compulsion to learn everything. And I've let up on that a little bit, but I still, you know, wake up at five, work go to class from like, and when I say work, I mean work on school, work, studying, whatever, go to class from like eight to, usually it's like eight to noon with a lunch break and then more class until 2.30 or 3.30. And then I keep studying until, you know, like 
maybe an hour before I go to bed at eight. And so I am like not afraid of hard work. I actually really enjoy working. But I've also realized that what was happening in the process of that is that I just stopped doing anything or thinking in any way outside of medicine. And then it's after you've been doing that for a while, you just forget anything outside of that. Like, it's hard to remember what I did before. And I know that it's only been a year, basically, but it's just kind of this scary feeling where suddenly you realize that when you do have a moment of free time, you're like, what am I doing? And who am I if I'm not doing schoolwork? And the other thing is that, you know, medicine is not just knowing about what makes people sick or, um, injuries and then how to fix them. There's like a culture that's been passed down through generations of what medicine is. And I found that that way of thinking in some ways feels, can feel like confining. Like it's, it can feel like you're sort of being indoctrinated in this one way of thinking and and then, you know, the parts, other parts of me outside of that kind of fall away. Um, and that's also a scary thing because I, I respect that it's really important for us to be able to think in a certain way to help our patients. But I also don't want to lose other parts of me, if that makes sense, that are... I think also beautiful and important for things like art and social activism and other things that have been rich parts of my life in the past. I've sort of had certain aspects of myself that have sort of fallen away as I go through this process. I just stopped making videos because this is something I do outside of medicine, right? That I that is comes from my passion and my joy and my curiosity and then when I didn't have those things it was like I had no motivation to make these videos yeah I didn't feel motivated to do anything outside of studying and so I think you know I don't have the answers yet about what I could have done differently I, like something I've heard is like oh make sure you spend some time doing other things and I'm doing that more and more and, and I guess I am making this video so maybe that is helping and I, recently I've been meditating and that has been helpful too but I just think it's important to know so that when you go into medical school you can be sure that you are aware of it because I think for me it was sort of an insidious thing that happened without me even really knowing it um and now I'm trying to figure out how to take step back, steps back. And the other thing is I think it has to do with the pandemic too, where maybe if it weren't for the pandemic, I would have been able to do more and like been in person in more student activities that were really engaging and connected to my passions and who I am um, and what's important to me. Whereas I like was doing all medical school basically in front of a screen alone. And that's the other weird thing is that I feel like I've, I need to like relearn how to have social interactions in a way because I've been so isolated for so long. So it's just been a strange time. I think that's the summary of it. But I, I want to return to these videos. There are videos I still want to make um, and that are long overdue that I, I want to share with you all because I think it's important. So I'm going to work on trying to to come back to this channel. I'm not even filming on my camera. I'm filming on my computer. So I hope that this works out. But I just wanted to take some time to reach out and explain what's going on. And hopefully I will have more videos for you soon. So if you are interested, please do subscribe and like um, this video and turn on your notifications. I think the thing I would be really curious to hear is other people who've... Um, 
you know, been in medical school or who are doing similar things, like, have you had a similar experience? I don't know if I'm the only one who has this experience or this is every person and people just aren't talking about it, but please do feel free to share your experience um, and maybe that could be helpful for me too. So thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll have more videos for you soon.